Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio. You're here with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast here in Australia. And I hope you've had an absolutely awesome week wherever you are in this amazing planet of ours. I've been fortunate enough I've been away for a few days, so I'm back now feeling very, very rested and ready to get back into work in a big way. It's always nice to get away from your hometown for a few days R&R and catch up with family and friends. So I've really been very fortunate this week. Unfortunately, again, we must open the show with our, our hearts and our prayers and as much positive energy as we can muster for our friends in Texas and that terrible massacre. Look, it just seems to be each week we're, we're joining hands and trying to make some small difference by letting them know that we do care and they are in our, in our thoughts and our prayers. Here in Australia yesterday, we had a terrible accident where two little children were killed in a, an accident at a school here. So... You know, we don't miss out on, I suppose, these tragic events either. So for wherever you are in the world of ours, if you've had any sort of tragedy, you've lost somebody that's really special to you this week, we, we just want to say here at A1R Psychic Radio on Moonstruck TV, we do care and we are sending you loving, positive energy. So let's sort of move the show along now and let's start to kick the show off this week with our Simply Tarot card of the week. Now, this week I'm really excited to say that we've got the Queen of Pentacles. Now, I'm not sure that we've had a court card yet on the show, but the Queen of Pentacles is a really interesting energy because, it, yes, it can mean that we could have a bigger influence this week with the possibility of a dark-haired woman with dark eyes coming into our lives that could be quite prominent. But the secondary meaning to the court card is this, is that we all need to look at ourselves in a much more professional manner. Look at how we're presenting ourselves to the face of the world. Are we presenting our best foot forward? Are we being professional? Are we being businesslike? Be aware to not be too domineering, too bossy, trying to get our point across in our in our day-to-day -day lives, sometimes I think we can all be a little bit domineering and sort of trying to be bossy to get our, our voice heard. So this week it's asking us to be, if particularly if you're a female, be much more aware of how you're presenting yourself from a physical and an emotional standpoint. Make sure that you are as professional and as business-like as possible and don't be too bossy. So we're now going to move on to the next segment of the show where we have a little glimpse of what's happening in the universe. Now, this week, I'm really excited to talk about we have the opportunities for breakthroughs. Now, for those that of you who have been watching the show fairly regularly, you'll know each week I talk about, you know, this planet's holding hands with this one or this is making this sort of planetary configuration. Well, this week we have the planet Saturn, which is the taskmaster, which is the planet that sort of sets our rules, our regulations and governs all the official areas of our lives, is in Sagittarius. So it's in higher mind stuff, overseas events, things that are on a global scale is what is where Saturn's sitting at the moment. Now, I'm lucky enough to say this week that Saturn is actually forming what's known as a trine or a triangle in astrology. A trine is a very easy aspect, is an aspect of, of great positivity, of great change, of things coming much easier in our lives. And he's actually trining the planet Uranus. Now, Uranus, we're going to feature a little bit later on in the show as well, but this week Saturn is actually trining or forming this triangle formation with Uranus, which is in Aries. So both of them are in fire signs. Now, the reasons why I'm saying I think that we can have some major breakthroughs this week is Uranus is the planet of the unusual and unexpected. It can create openings out of nowhere. Now, with it being in Aries, it means it wants to take this very me-first approach. It wants to push through. It wants to break through some of the barriers that have been put up around the world and by different countries, different nations, different ways of looking at problem solving, things like this. Uranus wants to come in and break that down. And he wants to do it in a very disciplined, focused solid manner that says, OK, now, look, I appreciate that you've got a different opinion to me and we are all entitled to our opinions, but let's see if we can thrash this out. Let's see if we can find a positive way to move forward and to make better informed decisions for both countries concerned or the world as a whole. So I'm really feeling quite positive and quite excited that maybe we just might be able to have this little glimmer of hope of saying that maybe we'll get some breakthroughs and we'll get some positive communication happening with our world leaders. Wouldn't that be a blessing for a change to see 
people actually playing in the sandbox together nicely for a change instead of wanting to dong each other on the head and sort of say, look at me, I'm the most powerful person in the globe. Instead of that, let's all find a way to find some solutions to the world's problems like global warming and hunger and things like that that are important. And I think also to the, the violence that's going on in the world, I think we need to have a world summit on that, that how do we handle this? How do we take moving forward to try and prevent these tragedies from happening week after week? So this now leads me into my candle of the week. Now, the candle of the week that I've chosen this week from my extensive range of 27 eco soy candles that are made with lead-free wicks is that I've chosen the, the candle of healing. Each week on the show, I've been asking everybody to sort of join together and in prayer and holding hands and sending positive energy and healing energy to those people around the globe that need it. So this week, I thought I'd focus by using the healing candle. And when I use a healing candle, what I need to do, what I do personally myself when I'm working with a healing candle is if I'm working for a client that might need a particular type of healing, whether it's emotional or whether it's physical, I take their name and I write it on there and what they're hoping to change or improve in their lives. And bearing in mind, I'm not a doctor and I haven't got a magic wand that can cure all the ailments of the world. But what I can do is try and help this person be able to focus or concentrate on the things that may need healing in their lives and hopefully bring some small improvement. For me personally, it was a candle that sort of I, I toyed with for a long time before I actually brought it into the range because I had a real issue with trying, being very aware not to give people false hope. We can't cure the terminal illnesses of the world and we're not meant to. That's for scientists to come up with those answers and hopefully have the breakthroughs medically that is needed. But what the healing candle can do is help you put a point of focus, particularly if you need to heal something on an emotional level. There may be a rift in the family. You may have had a very serious disagreement with a loved one and you don't know how to, to where to begin, how to start healing this rift. In the first place we've got to start is with healing ourselves. And I think too many times in our lives, we take on board the anger, the frustration and everything else and take on board all the blame as well for a situation that didn't work out the way that we had anticipated or the way that we think society predicts it should be. Not every person is going to get on with each other in the world. That's the world. And at times, I think we need to look at healing ourselves and healing our inner child or healing the emotional side of ourselves. And that's how I like to work with the healing candle. I tend to burn one probably once a week for a couple of hours a week. And I just put on my piece of paper the things that are personally going on in my life that I would like to heal or I would like to send some healing energy to someone. So now we're going to focus on our little mini astrology lesson. And it's, I know for those of you that have been watching every week and you sort of think, wow, where does all this information come from? Well, I'd like to say I, I invented it all, but I certainly didn't invent any of it. It's been information that's been passed down through the centuries by very, very talented people, I suppose, that have been incredibly observant and noticed patterns and situations that kept repeating themselves over and over and over and over again. Then it became the information that was documented to go with that particular planet, that particular sign. And this is where we get our information from with astrology. Yes, astrology is a research science. It is something where we do work a lot with mathematics between the different degrees between the, the planets and they're always moving around the zodiac. They're dancing around the circle, so to speak. And each one has a different speed or a different pace that it likes to dance around the zodiac. Uranus is known as one of the outer planets, and it's one of the, the planets that was seen for many, many years by even astrologers as not to have a great impact on the personal chart of a person. Now, when I first got into astrology over 30 years ago, that was the belief system. And I was one of the rare new astrologers, I suppose, coming through the channels there that believed Uranus had a bigger impact on a chart than most people thought. And a lot of people poo-hooed me. A lot of other astrologers said, oh, you're silly. You know, why would you look at it in that way? But I just had a real thing for Uranus. I just felt very comfortable with the Uranian energy. It reminded me very much of the Tower card in the Tarot. 
which a lot of people also had an issue with. Oh, gee, I don't want the tower card because it means catastrophes and disasters and things like that. But on the upside, the, ta the tower card, the same as Uranus, means things are going to change with lightning speed things aren't always going to stay the same. We're not going to stay in this uncomfortable rut. We are going to be able to move forward. And many, many times in our lives, wouldn't you just like that magic wand to move things along so that you can get the breakthroughs, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, let's just get out of this mess and let's get going. Well, Uranus is the planet that brings that towards us. So what I see here with Uranus, now Uranus is going to be moving through the next three signs. So today we're going to be working with Cancer, Leo and Virgo. And you will see Uranus will work very differently in each. So Uranus in Cancer, very interesting combination this one is because Uranus is the planet of the unusual and unexpected and likes to do things quickly. The Cancer energy is about security about feeling their way through a situation, about wanting to be in control, but also at the same time being sort of quite shy, subdued, hiding, sort of retracting back into their shell. So it's almost like these two situations are at opposite ends. Uranus wanting to come in and do things at a fast pace and let's get everything out in the open and let's go. And Cancer says, oh, no, 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 I'm going to hide back in my shell. I'm not ready for this. Oh, yes, I know I poked my head out and said I want to change, but I didn't really want it now. Can't we do this next week? So they sort of have a little dance around each other while they're both sort of trying to do what they believe is right, but at the same time keeping one eye on each other to see where things are going and to see whether they can outsmart each other. So Uranus in Cancer can actually bring some very brilliant psychic flashes when they allow themselves to work with this energy and sort of go with their first interpretation, their first feeling then it can be like that bolt of lightning out of the blue. So they can really sort of come out with some very profound statements at times and don't even know where it's come from. And that's because it's Uranus in Cancer. Now, Uranus in Leo. Now, this is a very interesting combination too in a completely different way. We have Uranus, the planet, as I said, the unusual and the unexpected, and Leo always wanting to be centre of attention. No matter what Leo does, Leo wants to get out on the stage and perform and say, look at me, look at me, aren't I perfect, aren't I wonderful, and aren't I just the greatest? And Uranus comes along and says, well, who in the hell do you think you are? You know, I can show you how to fall off the stage and break your leg if you like. And Leo just sort of ignores that statement because, you know, well, why would anybody want to do that? Because I'm just so perfect. Why would anybody want to make changes for me? But when they start to hold hands and work together, they actually find that they can make some great inroads in the fact that they can get people to sit up and take notice of the message or the situation that they want to talk about or they want to share with people. They can really move mountains. It can be a very electric, very dynamic sort of force or an energy. It can be the time where people, you know, thousands of people sit up and take notice of the message that's being shared because it's such a magnetic, such an electric energy that comes through the ability of the Iranian energy, but also the showmanship of the Leo energy. So if you really want to get somebody to sell a message for you, look to see if they've got Uranus in, in Leo and you've certainly got the perfect person for the advertising campaign, that's for sure. So the final sign we're going to work with this week is Virgo. Now, Uranus and Virgo, very odd bedfellows if I've ever seen two together. Uranus, again, wanting to move things along, and Virgo says, but I'm happy with the way everything is. Virgo's got to take their time, analyse everything, go back to the beginning and analyse it again and again and again in case I've missed something. And Uranus is sort of stamping his feet and twiddling his thumbs and saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. When they do join forces, it's interesting because the Iranian energy can be channeled into very positive ways. We can also find that it helps here if somebody was looking to forensically look at a situation or an issue or needing to look for an answer that had been hidden, then Uranus can sort of maybe point them in the right direction because Uranus's impatientness will dart here, will dart there and sort of take them off into a different direction. And quite often then, that's when we find the answers. So Uranus and Virgo do actually work very well together. It can be that light bulb moment coming in for the information that's required. So we're going to take our first caller, which is Peggy in Delhi, Ontario, Canada, are you there, Peggy? Hi, Amanda. How are you tonight? 
Very well, thank you, Peggy. How can I help you? Do you have a question I can answer for you? Well, sure. And, you know, the usual question is, who is the new man coming into my life? Yeah, that is a very popular question, Peggy. Along with that and money, I think they're the two major questions I get asked weekly, daily. Um, Peggy, the first thing I want to say to you is I don't feel that Mr Wright's just arriving next week. I feel that there's still a little bit of waiting time. What I am being shown is there's somebody coming back trying to re-enter your life from your past. Now, this man had dark hair and dark eyes. I don't feel he was the most recent person from your past. I want to take it back a few years. Now, he's going to come back on the scene and try and sort of fluttery his eyelashes at you and try and get your attention and sort of say to you, or maybe we were a bit premature and breaking up and all this sort of thing. What I can tell you about is nothing's changed. I don't think he's learnt it anything in the time that the two of you have been apart. He was always fairly self-absorbed and self-centred. And what you're sort of seeing is it's sort of like you're sitting back, you're letting him have his little say, and you're thinking to yourself, gee, I had a lucky escape there. Why would he think I would want to go back to that? Now, I want to use that as a marker in time. If he was to come into your life, say, in three weeks' time, then it's not very far past that the right person is coming in. So say he comes in in three weeks and we play around with, you know, checking him out and seeing what he's got to offer for the next three or four weeks. Well, then it's only a couple of weeks past that in comes the right person. So the right person that I'm seeing coming in, I'm not saying there won't be opportunities for dates in between. I'm, I'm picking out the important people that I see crossing your path. The one that I really right. feel the most comfortable with has got bluey, greeny coloured eyes. He's got light brown hair. He's a fairly tall man. I'd say about two or three years older than you. I do feel when you first meet him, you think mm, maybe not, the energy's not quite right. I don't feel this overwhelming, exciting connection. Yeah, he's okay. I want to say to you, don't judge a book by its cover, Peggy, because just because the bells and whistles aren't going off at the very first meeting, I feel it's one of those situations where you need to go on two or three dates before you realise, hey, hang on a minute, I really do like you. You know what I mean? You've got, there's something about you that sort of is really starting to pique my interest. I like him. I think he's a well-educated man. I think he's probably got what I'd term as a little bit of a dry sense of humour. And that can be sort of sometimes a little bit difficult to work out because sometimes you sort of think, what on earth are you talking about? I'm sure that was supposed to be funny, but I don't quite get it. And I think that's going to take a little bit of time. But on the whole, I like him. I feel he's a, a really nice man and I feel he's very well read. And I think as you get to know him a bit more, you're going to find there's many, many layers to this man and he's very, very intriguing. And there's a, a real depth of character there. See, a lot of the people that you've you've had love interest with, particularly in the last couple of years, when I say a lot of people, you know, one or two, they've always been quite shallow. You know, you've been attracted to them and thought that they had yeah, you know, a really, you know, interesting personality and they've done a lot with their life. But once you dig a little bit deeper, you find, well, hang on a minute, there's really no depth to you. You know, it's like I've seen and I've heard it all. What's next? So I feel that that's why this relationship is going to feel very different right from the beginning. But they were also sharing with me, Peggy, you've got question marks around your job. I've got which around my job, Amanda? Question mark. So are you thinking of changing your job or has it just been a bad week? Well, I started a different, it's the same type of work. It's just a different shift and it's given me more hours. Thank God for that. But the hours really stink. It's 1.30 to 8 o'clock at night. Right. Okay. That might be why I'm picking up the question marks then. Yep. I, look, I just sort of feel bare with that because even though they've given you this shift that you don't particularly like, I feel there'll be an opportunity as we head closer towards the end of this year of being offered work that you're more comfortable with within the same company. Okay. So that, 
yeah, that might very well be then a different shift, you know, where you're happier with the hours. It's still the same work, but you're just happier with the other hours. But I feel that there's more and more work coming towards you. So I think in all in all, Peggy, I think you've got a very exciting six months ahead of you with, the, you know, the man from the past, the new one, and the changes with work, and sort of 2018 is shaping up to be your year. Well, is the new man a lawyer? They don't necessarily show me their professionals. I knew was he wore a suit to work and carried a briefcase. So, yes, he's a professional man, but they don't say to me they're a lawyer or a doctor yeah. or a dentist. They just show me that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't digging ditches. So I have to be aware that the past relationship that ended a couple months ago yeah. is going to try and come back in, and it's a no-go. Yeah, I, nothing's changed. That's what I'm saying. Nothing's changed there. And you'll see that, and it's like you've moved on so much from that. It's just sort of like it's it's entertaining, if I can put it that way, watching him jump through hoops. Yeah. You just can't find anybody. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Peggy. Lovely to speak with you. We're going to go to, to Stacey now in Gillette, Wyoming. Are you there, Stacey? I am. How can I help you tonight, Stacey? Do you have a question I can work with? Yes. Um, I'm looking to move to another town. I'm wondering right. um, if that will happen and, and when. Okay, Stacey. Look, the first thing they're showing me, yes, there is a number of endings, changes and transformations coming up around you. So, yes, I do definitely feel you're going to move. Do I feel it's going to be before the end of the year? The answer I'm going to say is very unlikely. They're showing me being stronger towards the beginning of the new year, sort of like mid-January through to the end of February is sort of when it's at its strongest. Now, if you had a particular direction that you were thinking of going on a map, if we were facing to, towards Canada, I'm going to say to you, if you were going to go to the right, I feel you're going to go more to the left. It's sort of like we'll go right, but we'll detour back into the left a little bit. It's a different location to what you had first worked out. I also feel that you'll actually have a job to go to. I don't think you're just going to move blind. I think you'll move to, to a job to, for a reason to go there. So have you been applying for jobs in other locations? I have not, but my children live in another town and they're looking to relocate to their town. Okay. So is that sort of within what I sort of described to you? Because to me it's sort of like where you thought you were going, we're just going to go a little bit to one side of that. So is there yes. another town close by to where the children are? Yes. That. That's, to me, where I strongest feel you're going to be. I don't think you're going to be in exactly the same town as the children, but I think you're certainly going to be very much close by. It's like two towns sort of sitting almost side by side. Okay. And I feel you'll have a job to go to. I don't think you're going to go there without a job to go to. Um, I haven't been looking right now. Right. But I, I, I could see work. You were going and there was work there. So if you haven't been looking right now, I know you were hoping to move before Christmas, weren't you? And I just don't feel that's going to be possible. That's fine. But I do feel that, you know, it won't be too far into the new year. And I, I did actually, I, I keep, they keep showing me this job. Even though you haven't been looking for one, there's a job coming and that will sort of help with the move. But I also sort of felt that your health was improving a lot more than it was the, since the early part of this year. Sort of like the early part of this year, you didn't believe you'd feel as well as you do now. That's true. So these are all positives as far as I can see that, you know, your health will just continue to get better and better and better. But is there someone special in your life at the moment? Is there a lovely dark-headed man around you? Um, yes. We're not um, dating, but we're friends. Right. Oh, I, I just feel there's going to be more than just friends there. Let's put it that way. Okay. Just don't be surprised that if he doesn't follow you when you move. I just sort of feel that 
he's just waiting to see what you're going to do. He feels you've had enough things to contend with without him stepping forward and sort of showing you how he feels because he sort of feels that that might then change your decision. Like he wants you to be happy. He wants you to be closer to the children. He wants you to keep progressing the way you have. And once you've sort of moved and got settled, it seems a strange way to start a relationship. But it's after that that he makes his move forward. So don't be disappointed by that. I think he's allowing you to get your life in order first, and then he'll show you how he feels. Very good. Yeah, but that's good because it enables you to reestablish the, you know, the really solid foundation with your children, which is important. We get you back into some work. I don't think it'll be full-time, but I feel it'll be part-time. Your health is continuing, continuing to improve. And you're starting to, you know, really re we ramp up your life again, which is very, very important because there'd been so many things that you've let go of this year and things that have changed without you even really willingly wanting them to change. They just changed. So it's good to see now that things are going to start to move forward again, and that's a very positive thing in your life. So that's good. I'm feeling very, very excited, Stacey, with what I'm seeing for 2018. Were you hoping to buy a little place? Um, I was kind of looking at something, but um, I'll just um, take it as it comes. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be in the first six months of next year, but I do see after June I think you'll be really seriously looking at, you know, purchasing a little little house, I saw, and, you know, you're going to be very, very happy there. So, Stacey, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to do a reading for you. Again, we've come to the end of the show, so I look forward to joining, you joining us again next week with the Simply Tarot Card of the Week. We will also feature a new soy candle next week. We'll also have a glimpse and look at what's happening in the universe. And next week, we're going to be working with the next three planets in Uranus, which will be Libra, Scorpio and Sagittarius. So hopefully you're going to have an awesome week wherever you are in this amazing planet of ours. And don't forget, our hearts, our prayers, our love, our wishes, everything as we join hands for everybody that's had a tragedy this week, whether it's been Texas, whether it's been here in Australia or whatever part of the globe that you live in, just know that we're here for you and we are thinking of you and we will hold you in our prayers. So until next week, have a great show. And we'll have a great show next week. Have an awesome week and be kind to each other. Do something special. Do something magical for yourself. I know I'm going to this weekend. I'm going to meet somebody that I've wanted to meet for a very, very long time. So have an awesome week wherever you are. Bye for now and we'll do it all again in seven days. Have a great week. Bye for now.